Hey, what's up guys? So in my last video, I did a full hardware walkthrough of the new Arduino 101 board. And if you remember, there was a part on the board that was kind of shiny over here. And at first I wasn't sure what this part was, but as soon as I pulled up the schematic and started digging through it, it turned out that this is the protected USB load switch. And its main function is to allow the board to switch over from USB power to barrel jack power when you plug into the barrel jack connector. Uh, it has other functionality as well, but that's its main purpose on this board. And I got into that, uh, into all that functionality and how it works in the last video. So we found that this is actually a wafer level chip scale package. So that's like the bare die with the BGA balls on the bottom of it. So that's why it's it's a shiny part like that. And these parts are used all the time in you know high density boards like cell phones and things like that because you can get the parts so itty bitty uh, like that. So uh, the interesting thing though, and the reason I'm making this video is because somebody reminded me in the comments uh, for that last video that the Raspberry Pi also has a part on board that is in a wafer level package. And when you take pictures of the board with a Xenon flash bulb, the Raspberry Pi falls into reset. So the question is, is what happens when you take a picture of the Arduino 101 board uh, with the Xenon flash bulb? So, spoiler alert, some interesting things are about to happen. So let's, uh, let's run some tests. Okay, so we've got the Arduino 101 plugged in via the USB jack here. So it's getting its five volts through the USB jack, through the, the, uh, the load switch. The load switch then powers the 3.3 volt regulator, which powers everything else on the board, including the Curie. Uh, we have a power good LED here, a little green LED. So that's powered off of the 3.3 volt rail. And if we're lucky, we'll actually see that do something because the failure mode uh, of interest would be if the load switch turns off when we flash high intensity light at it. So anyway, that is the setup and let's see what happens. Um, so so first, the first thing I actually tested, which was not very eventful, was to just flash LEDs at it. So I tested RGB LEDs, I tested uh, infrared LEDs, and I even tested some UV LEDs and uh, nothing happened. Uh, to the load switch. So now let's test the load switch with a DSLR camera. And I've got a Canon Rebel T5 with the flash on. So you've got the, the Xenon bulb there, power this on. Over on the scope, we're just looking at the five volts. Everything looks good and clean there. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens. Here's the flash. Okay, yeah, something definitely happened. You can see we got two drops in the voltage output, and I got 20 milliseconds per division here, uh, one volt per division on that vertical scale, and you can see we're getting about a five millisecond drop dropout on that voltage. So yes, <laughs> definitely some problems there. And let's just give it a couple more flashes, see how consistent that is. And uh, let's try it again. Yeah, it's, it's the same exact pulse pattern every time I flash it. So yeah, no doubt, there you go. We do lose the, the voltage output on the load switch. Um, the other thing too I wanted to test out was to see what a laser would do to this. So let's see. I'm gonna shine a laser right on it. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this wreaks havoc on the part. So you can see on the, uh, in fact, I'm gonna throw the scope into auto sweep so that we can just see it constantly there. And I'm just gonna try to aim it right on that part. Let's see, almost, oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, probably not, but the LED is going crazy. Where is it at? Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, look at that. You, you can see that on the camera, the, the LED is going nuts. And over on the scope too, I'm able to, there we go, that's where I want it. Look at that, I'm actually holding it, 
holding it in the off position. The load switch is completely disabled. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, that was interesting. I got some other LEDs to go crazy there too. So the red fault LED turned on there. So I don't know what happened there. So hopefully I didn't just destroy this board. I don't know. Let's try that again. See what see if I can make that do happen again. Okay. Yep. So the LED turns off. Now that fault LED might just be, you know, because I'm power cycling the, the, the Curie so much and, you know, the USB signals are all getting screwed up. It's enumerating over on the, the Mac there. So that could be part of the problem there. So it might not be a catastrophic, you know, permanent uh, type of damage there. But yeah, there you go. So we can definitely cause issues to the wafer level load switch, wafer level package load switch from the xenon bulb and with a laser so there you go just kind of an interesting video there thanks for watching